All right, here we are, another week around the trash fire. Your host, Matthias, along with the boy. John. Well, we got a lot of reveals to show off. And I've got some news of my own to share as well. But of course, that's going to take a back burner to all the things that we need to catch up on as well. But it's summer, John. And it is hot in California. And a lot of the rest of the America, but it's it's getting it's getting to that point where it's a hundred plus degrees over here, and I'm yeah. not enjoying game, it. Game inside, friends. Get the AC, get the water, stay hydrated. But I'm just I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about this week's news. There's a lot yeah. a lot of good stuff to talk about. Me too. Starting off, we're going to just briefly talk about some video game news that came out today. I've yet to play this. Maybe I'll play this next week, depending on my schedule. But uh, another Chaos Gate DLC is coming out, and uh, the Assassins are going to be playable here. And not much to say about it. Uh, it looks good. Looks fun. It's got to be better than that Dreadnought DLC that they released last time. That's true, yeah. Because I was, they were like asking for like ten dollars for that. I was like, that's a bit steep. For a Dreadnought. For a Dreadnought, yeah. No, it wasn't a Dreadnought. It was just a Dreadnought. Oh but yeah, it was a Dreadnought. If it was a Dreadnought, then you know, maybe, but maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah, assassins are coming in to the this game. Looks cool. Looks good. Uh, again, I'll probably get my uh, opinions on the game maybe next week. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff still happening, gaming wise that I need to take care of. But there's that for anyone who's played the game. You have that to look forward to. Moving on, Sunday preview. So we're getting our. Astra Militarum, uh, female, re-released, coming back, so as well as her special edition book, blah, 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 more books, more books, same things, Necromunda, there's something we haven't talked about in a while, kind of yeah. fell off, but you know, they when you had a release every week, it's good to take a break, but, right. uh, we're getting uh, the core rulebook updated. Coming yep, so back. Uh, yep, includes all the core rule changes from the. What's it called? From the. Ashways. Ashways, yep. Is going to include all the FAQs, is like what I'm looking for. The FAQs and erratas. So, yeah, it's all compiled into a new core rulebook. Now, if you have the regular or the latest rulebook, you won't need this one. It just. People coming in to Necromunda, or people who want to just a more concise rule book, this is for you. Yep, so that's coming hardback and digital. Getting the gang tactic cards are coming. The open hive war card packs, mm -hmm. little card sleeves for if you want to keep them from getting too damaged. Uh. Black Library, we're getting a regiment banner. If you'd like to hang that on your door or wall, up to you. Getting a Renegades, Haro Master, soft cover and audio. And Manslayer coming up to audio. And for Warhammer Plus, we're getting Lord Master on the Librarians, and it looks like a battle report between the Space Dwarves and something else. So that is what is coming this week for pre-orders. Not much, but that's okay. We have a lot of stuff that uh for other games that are going to be getting a lot of new, new and exciting things. Like, oh well, this is something that happened last week. We had uh the point changes and a uh, change to a certain army. That was a bit uh, 
too overwhelming. So, what did the point changes include here? Well, basically if you had the keyword towering or indirect fire, you went up in points. Just straight up. Didn't matter if you were OP, useless. If you had those keywords, you went up in points. And didn't matter if you were a towering model that had no ranged weapons to speak for, you got a points increase. Yep, exactly. And it was a, it was a bit sad. A bit sad to see. My favorite thing that I saw, which was just uh, just baffling, was uh, the Lord of Skulls going up in points. But not yep. just any Lord of Skulls. The World Eater Lord of Skulls. Yeah. Because I think... Uh, I don't remember what the normal Space Marine, Chaos Space Marine one is, but I know the World Eaters went up to like 580. Which was like way more than the normal Chaos Space Marine one. I was like, what? Well, that's crazy. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. So, this is, uh, you know... GW doing a bad decision and just point increasing all the wrong models. I mean, I get it. Towering and indirect fire. A bit busted. Especially for certain models. Uh, Wraith Knight. But I don't think I don't think everyone needed to be hit by this point increase, but Yeah. It's it reminds me of the Legion nerf where they nerfed I think Vigilance, which lets you keep extra dodge tokens on your core units because like pikes were OP, but at the same time, rebels who really needed that also got hurt pretty bad. So it just kind of sucks. Yeah, it's a it's a bit of a bad blanket band aid that GW is doing. Yeah, but I guess that's what happens when you don't have a a core playtesting team anymore, which is fine. You know, the playtesters did kind of abuse their powers by leaking all the information all the time, but mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't get stuff like this, especially uh, the Eldar uh, army rule being changed as well which uh, I'm okay with I'm, I'm okay with it being changed to this, it's now instead of being able to use uh, unlimited dice you are now limited to one dice per phase which uh, I'm okay with. That's fine. You're not getting all Fair that thing. critical hits, you know, with your Wraith Cannons uh, for both guns kind of deal. So, or making all your saves just because you had the dice. Now you have to be a little more strategic with it. So, all in all, I'm okay with the changes. Those are fine. But, uh, yeah. That is, that was the majority of it. Everything else, I mean, nothing, nothing changed. Unless you had those, you know, those keywords and the only army rule that ever changed was strands of fate for the craft world Eldar. So it was kind of just a hot fix that wasn't really thought out well, but that is the army uh, changes pretty much. That we didn't cover last week. Last week there wasn't just many stories to cover. I know this was a big one, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to dedicate the whole podcast to this one thing, so I just skipped it. But moving on, John, favorite thing: Cities of Sigmar range announcement. So we got to see some uh, some new uh, miniatures here. Yeah. So big thing is it announces what's staying. So they show the, the which I think we've seen before, the starter set or yes. the launch box that's going to come. Super excited for that box. But it also tells us which units will or kits will stay. Looks like the Steam Tank, Celestial Hurricanum, the, and the Griffin, which is the Carl Franz model. It, there, Those are staying. It looks like there will be some rules for having dwarves and elves, but that's not going to be the main focus of the Cities of Sigmar. It's actually been a question that the 
AOS and Sadie's community has been asking for a while is that what extent is to what extent is Cities of Sigma gonna be a multi race army or if it's gonna be humans only? And it seems that they're gonna focus on the humans, which for me is my favorite part of Cities of Sigma. So I'm fine with that. It actually makes me more excited. But it seems like there's still rules to ally in dwarves and elves and all that. And they even tell you that you could still ally with Caradrons, Sylvaneth, and Stormcast, that you, which you could do before. Mm -hmm. And it also spit, fills out units that are going to leave the range. So stuff like Demigriff Knights, Nomad Princes, Shadow Warriors, the Phoenix, Phoenix Guard, and all that. Which kind of sucks, but they're all going to be in, and they say this as well, they're all going to be in Old World. So it's not like those kids are going to get squatted forever. They're going to just leave the AOS range and then be relegated to the Old World range, which I'm totally fine with. So this is, I think this is a, a good article. It's it's all in the name of transparency. You know, some people are upset, which is understandable, but it um, just tells us which units are staying and which are leaving. You never want to see your army get squatted or any of your models that you, you know, spend a lot of time building slash painting. No, it seems that, I think for some units, there's easy, what's the word, just kind of, counts as, like, you could use some handgunners to count as the new fusiliers that we're going to talk about later. You could use Fear Gold Guard to count as the infantry, but... You know, stuff like Demigriff Knights and all that. I don't know what the one-to-one is going to be. So, but yeah, it does suck to have these units not be included anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is such a ragtag army anyway. Like, Cities of Sigmar before now hasn't really been, felt like an AOS army. It just feels like a band-aid to a fantasy, you know, old-world Warhammer fantasy battle army. But now with the new models, it definitely feels more like a, just a, a full Age of Sigmar army. So, yeah. Yeah, well... Can't wait to see what's going to happen. The line. We get more and more information about it. Because yeah, we're going to... They hint at some artillery that's going to be coming out for this army. I want to see more knights. Like, monstrous cavalry. Kind of like the Demigriff knights. I think they should keep the Demigriff knights, to be honest. But like, I don't know they... what they have planned, so... Yeah. But, yep, there we go. Again, there's more AOS to talk about, but... Moving on, I have a Heresy Thursday. We have a Loyalist Champion. We got good old... Uh, oh god, I'm blanking on the name. Imperial Fist. Uh, here with the Great Sword. Basically, just a, basically an Emperor's Champion right here. Yeah, it's interesting because... I mean, it's called the Legion Champion Centurion because it all it does is it has bonuses to melee. He gets a Paragon Blade and Iron Halo. It's a cool model. I wonder why it's labeled Loyalist. I don't see anything specifically Loyalist about the sculpt. Maybe the Traitor one's going to look more demonic. But for the Loyalist one, like this could be a Sons of Horus or a Night Lord's one. If you just paint them those colors, right? There's nothing particularly Traitor. Or sorry, there's nothing particularly Loyalist about this. Which I think is good. That means we're going to see a Trader one. Um, I like him. He's not too exciting of a model. It's pretty straightforward. I'd rather use him as a Praetor. I might get him, actually, as a Praetor, because I do need one for my Word Bearers, like a generic Praetor. So I could see myself picking this up eventually. Hmm. But he's definitely not, not an exciting model. I will, I will give that. I will I, agree I, with I that point. Like, yep. He's cool. I'm glad he exists, and he's a fine sculpt for a champion. But... Nothing to get overly hyped about, I think. No. It does mean, although Heresy Thursday is back, and people thought it was only going to be epic 30k Thursdays, but looks like they're also going to be previewing regular Forest Heresy Thursdays. Oh, I think they're going to alternate kind of deal. Yeah, I'm done with that. But yep, that is that. Uh, here we are. The AOS. This was a new model Monday, I believe. The fusilizers, whatever you call them, AOS handgunners. Yep. And uh, what are your thoughts? How do you like your they? gunners? They're super cool. They're very different from the Empire handgunners, which just had a an old musket. I like this because it's very like, you know, pre-Napoleonic 
but post medieval handgun styles. Like it doesn't look like a gun. It just looks like a stick with a cannon at the end, which is kind of what early guns were. So I think that's super cool that they're they're hammering that aesthetic of like six, fifteenth, sixteenth century European um, infantry, which is kind of where Empire from fantasy comes from, and which Shades of Sigmar is the next evolution of. So I do like this kind of unique aesthetic, and I cannot wait to pick some up. When I love the shields too. It's again also rooted in real world history with the the palisades or the mini palisades that some some soldiers had. When I first so, saw yeah. this, I said, "Say like they finally learned from the uh, the Skaven." The... I know, right? The Gisales. <laughs> yeah, that's that was the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah, it's they're super cool. They're very AOS. I. I I really like this unit. It's a very uh well designed unit, I would agree. <laughs> Definitely uh different. Cause I was not a fan of their musket unit back in the day. Yeah. That was weird. Especially the like the long sniper unit unit guy. Yeah, it it was too like just copy paste from again a real world example. Mm -hmm. I like that this draws inspiration from that, but is also unique. Like, their shields are way too fancy to be real life, you know? Which I much prefer. I do really like that. You gotta have style, okay? You gotta have style. And then they got a little uh, resupply run guy over here, too. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Adding, again, what AOS does best, some flavor to their units. So, all in all, very cool unit. AOS is, is finally getting the love after AOS or 40k has dominated the last few months. Several months. Yep. Several few, you know, details. But yes, AOS is back. It's coming back. So we got that. Um, we got Solar Exolia Combat Walkers for Epic. That were announced. You want to take it away on this because I know you're more excited about Epic than I am here. Yeah, it's it's a cool, cute unit. There's nothing. I mean, it's and I say cute and cool because I'm not particularly hyped about it. But it is a new design. We don't have a 30k model for this or a 40k model. So to see these weird kind of in just like wacky designs in Epic is is cool. So. I do. I am glad they exist, and I say that a lot because I do really think that a lot of the stuff that Games Workshop releases is good for the game in general. So, not particularly excited about this game specifically, but I'm glad that they're willing to just not copy paste from the main game, and that they're willing to vi revisit some more wackier designs from the old days and kind of modernize them without committing to a full plastic kit, and they could just use the production capacity for a specialist game because you know they're more picky about releasing a full unit for the the main scale right so yeah right, this is this is cool i think it's it's neat and i'm looking forward actually to any more crazy and wacky designs they're going to come up with for epic 30k i refuse to call it for of his actual name like legionus and parallax or whatever not like it's epic 30k it's epic 30k that's what it is yep but yeah, there we go. We got that coming our way eventually. And then for their 40k news. So I believe Saturday they uh aired the results of the winner of the campaign on what was this called? Orgram. Orgram. And uh the Tyranids won. Yes. 53%. Tyranids to forty seven percent space range, which means I lost, which means I won't be getting no free models. Dang. Cause I uh you know, I, I submitted my result. A space marine win. A space marine win. You know, I went with the I went with the generic that the space marines are just gonna win. Because more people have space marines than nah. they do Tyranids. Enough people were like, We're done with that crap. We want we want the status quo to change for once. We want we want the bugs to win. We but want anyone but Space Marines to win for once. Anyone but the Blue Boys. 
But yeah, uh, so the results are in. So Tyranids won, which means they get the first reveal of their new models. Because that was the whole point of this campaign, was the winner gets to see their new models first. So, let's dive right into it. First up, we got Gene Stealers. I got a little, little upgraded. Not, uh, you know, the the more HD, a little less, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Showing their time as the old Gene Stealers were. So, just a nice HD remake of the unit here. That's all I can really say about it. As a Tyranid player, John, how do, how do, you, how do you feel about the design of your Gene Stealers? Oh, it's great. It's... It's kind of like with the Eldar, Necron Warrior, and Orc Boy changes, where it's they didn't redesign the unit, they just made it in HD, and it looks amazing. It looks way better than the old unit. It reminds me of the Space Hulk Gene Stealers, which are way cooler than the the ones we used to have. So I'm I'm happy. Interesting that there are no scything talons. I wonder if they just took that out and they're just gonna go rending claws, which I'm totally fine with. But it seems like they're adding the stuff like the acid maw or i think it's the implant attack and then you have the the cthulhu squid face as an option which was great yeah this is a great kit i really like it i'm surprised it's not a kill team like we thought it would be but you know tyranids are such an iconic unit for tyranids same with hormogons we're gonna talk about later that they needed to be hdified before anything else we have enough non-troop hd models that we could revisit the troops, and I am very satisfied with how this turned out. Well, I mean, it's like, I don't remember if it was you or Will that once said that, you know, if you want to play an army, the base unit has to look good. Because that's, what's, that's what you're going to be fielding the most of. I mean, granted, in 10th edition, you don't have to field the battle line unit anymore, but, you know, Old veterans still have all the old models. And having their new models updated makes the army a lot more uh, attractive to getting. Yeah. And so. definitely, I definitely agree. The, it's, I mean, you're in 10th edition, you don't need for that to be the the most common unit in your army, which is your core, but it still, I think it still makes or breaks an army if your troops are, are good or not. Exactly. Got that. Next up. We just talked about it, the Hormagants. They're getting uh, their HD remake here. Definitely a lot better. They're definitely a lot uh, thinner, I want to say. I haven't really seen too many people run Hormagants. But these are definitely more action posed, ready to go. A lot of. Uh, it's a good thing, I'm pretty sure that, you know, the little action rock that they're all jumping off of uh, is attached to their leg because back in yeah. the day, that would have just been to uh, glue the tip of their toes to that rock and. Hope that yep. they stick. No, I think it's a genius design to add more stability to the model, but still, and allow for crazier poses. Like they look like velociraptors, which they kind of are, you know. Mm -hmm. And and it's crazy because I get that by just with a monopose model, like the model's not moving, right? It just looks, it's like a sculpture. So there's a lot of motion. This is excellently designed. Like I kind of just want to paint some of these because yeah, these look so cool. Like the guy leaping, like the ones that are stalking. Um, yeah, this is this this. You could tell like they took some inspiration from the Seraphon Lizardmen range, because man, like yeah, they look these look like dinosaurs, and I love it. Yep, and we even got the Termagons, which you know we saw in the starter set, but as you can see, some of them are have a little bit different guns. Yep, we got the Devourers, and we also have some heavy weapons, which is cool. Yep. Yeah, this is great. A solid, a solid kit coming in for both Termagons and Hormagons here. Moving on, we got the Stealthy Lictors coming out. 
and uh are not it yeah these are lictors okay just look at that look at the look at those designs crazy oh, man, this is like i want to i want this unit like, I want to play this army just so I can field this unit. This is so cool. I mean, I always really like Lictors, but not a fan of the old metal and resin sculpt. But yeah, this is great. It's interesting that the, the red one, the behemoth one, looks so different, even though it's the same exact model, just differently posed. It looks more beefy from the angle, which is great. Yeah, this is a 10 out of 10 design. And this really makes me want to play, like, an army of Tyranids. They even mentioned in the article that you're, there's a new detachment that's just lictors and, and gene stealers and stuff i'm like oh so tempting they also got the new neural lictor which i i mean this is i think he's cool I, I do this a lot but like don't get me wrong i think he's cool but i don't know why he exists like it's just a a psychic lictor you know it's it's like okay like do we really need this model? I, I don't know, but... Well, sure. you know... When we find out what his rules and abilities are, I'm sure... He will be uh, worth taking into the battlefield. I mean, right, I like him. It, right, and again, he's cool. It's just, like, thematically, like, okay, he's a, he's a lictor with wizard powers, you know, like... Okay... Well, you know, when you I, need psychic powers in the back line to help like boost or but do it's like, damage. Why not just make like a psychic carnifex, right? It's just kind of like, okay. <laughs> it's like, you know, peanut butter and I don't know, like hot sauce. It's like, yeah, you can mix them together, but you really need to. I mean, this guy is way cooler than peanut butter and hot sauce. Like, don't get me wrong. But again, like, he j just doesn't fulfill, doesn't add anything to the army i think thematically so i just again like i'm sure he'll be good and the model looks great but again thematically like i just don't see why he fits other than like it's cool let's just do it which games workshop has operated like that for the longest time but it it's just almost out of place for me and just ra i guess a, a better word is random you know mm -hmm. so but again he's still cool right and we got Death Leaper, which this is for sure, like, so far my favorite model of the new, or my favorite redesign, or my favorite new model of the new range. It's, it's so cool. I and really want to buy this guy. Out of the Lictors, this is my favorite. Yeah. I would just, I would buy a Lictor just for this model. I don't even I play Tyranids. I never want to play Tyranids, but I'd buy this model. Yeah, I might just play a thousand point, make a thousand point Tyranid army. Uh, if, all, if all lictors, just <laughs> lictors and gene stealers, like oh, so cool. But yeah, there we go. Lictors getting updated, new model as well. Moving on, we got the artillery of the army over here. Just my god, uh, the new biovolvers and pyrovolvers. Let's just look at those models. Like a little beetle with a cannon on its back. Or for you Yu-Gi-Oh people out there, it's an, it's a catapult turtle right here. Yeah, it's a really cool redesign. I think that they took a risk by just redoing the Biovore. Because, you know, if you look at the Lictor and the Gene Steelers and the Hormagons and the Termagons, they're the same design as the old kit, just HDified with 2023 technology. But this is a completely different model. Like, you just put it next to the old Biovore and Pyrovore, and you could you'll see exactly what I mean. It's just a different thing. I like them. It's a very different design from the uh, the rest of the range of this like kind of crab, kind of like reminds you of the Roach from Starcraft and the big gun in its back. I like him. I Pyro Pyrovore as well looks super cool. Yeah. Uh that much to add to what you said i mean design wise gw is knocking it out of the park which makes me very scared to see what the space marines are going to be like because if they're anything like the 
what were they called? The Desolation Squad? Oh, yeah. I'm, you know, I don't want to see that. I don't want anything like that for the and Space Marines. prediction for Space Marines, they could just do these three things and I'll be satisfied. Number one, full Terminator kit with assault options like Thunder Hammers and Lightning Claws. Bam. Probably, that's definitely going to happen. Yeah. Vanguard veterans, right? Same as the, the Stern Guard, but with jump packs and power weapons. Maybe make a Stern Guard squad too, full kit, sure. But so those two, and then plastic assault, mar- or sorry, primary assault marines, and then we're done. Just that's it. That's all I need. Don't release anything else, and I'll be very happy. Wait, but don't we already have make, primary like, assault marines? What's up? Aren't they just assault intercessors? With jump packs. Oh, okay. Yeah, that. Like assault marines with primary jump pack marines, which I think they will do because of space brain too. But just do that, and we're we're golden. But they'll probably be really something like desolators. I don't know. Maybe like. Power fist infantry. I don't know something. Well, they're definitely going to do the Terminator one. That, that that's a guarantee. Yeah, I think that's a given. I think we'll see full kits of the Terminator and the and the um, what's the word I'm looking for? And the Stern Guard veterans, of course. But we have one more image we got to talk about here for the Tyranids, and this is their new monstrosity, the Norn Queen. No, Norn Emissary. No, Norn sorry, Queen Norn is Emissary. enormous. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The Norn Emissary. <laughs> like Imperator. Actually, a Norn Queen would is a spaceship. Just I'm thinking of the Dominatrix, which is in like an Imperator size model. But yes, the Norn Emissary. Which by God, what a uh, what a model. It's not as uh, stunning as some other Titanic models, but this is still pretty good. Especially the base. It's got a lot going on. I'm excited to see this model. I don't know if this model is going to see any play, but I want to see this model on the board. It might. I mean, just give it a thing where it can be shot. I don't know. Um, Yeah, it's really cool. It's really interesting, too, in the lore. It's, it's like the Swarm Lord, except not a character. Because it, it's, it's only deployed against specific commanders Mm -hmm. but there's also the it's also a dual kit we also got the norn so there's a norn emissary which is the the one with the brain which i assume is like psychic powers and then we got the norn assimilator which is just like a point at thing in charge creature so yeah they're cool and i think they're taking the concept of the swarm lord and making it not a special character which i appreciate because you know, Tyranid special characters are already kind of a weird thing. I mean, I think they, they re... Like, I think the Death Leaper is not even... Yeah, it's it's not even just a special character anymore. It's like a specific rare mutation thing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and I think that's a better way to approach it, like, with this. Like, the Parasite of Mortrex, right, is not a, just one entity. It's a strain that's really rare. But, yeah, so these are the concept of a Swarm Lord, which is, like, an ultra-specific character they only deploy against specific enemies and make that, and they more, makes more sense they made that into a, a kind of, not, uh, a, a unit, like, a generic unit, so, and it looks super cool, it looks, I wonder how big it is in person, but the model looks... Well, I mean, it's side to side by a Wraith Lord over there, so it's just a oh, yeah, little right. taller yeah. than a Wraith Lord. Yeah, and Wraith Lord's not that tall. So I hope they do release... It's like, I guess it's a Primarch, you know, <laughs> equivalent. Mm-hmm. I do hope they release a Towering unit. I guess Towering's a new word now instead of Lord of War, but yeah, Towering unit for Tyranids. Well, it's... That would be nice. Yeah. But it's a, it's a, it's a good-looking model. Again, like I, like I said before, GW really knocked it out with the Tyranid models. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any bad models in this group y'all not 10 out of 10s but you know they're they're high eights eight plus is what i would say out of 10 on a majority of these units yeah so good job gw that is it for the uh uh all the warhammer news that i have I don't know, is there anything that I missed that you want to 
talk about really fast? Or I think that's it. Alrighty then. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get off that screen there. Then, uh, what have you been up to? Or do you have anything else you want to talk about? Star Wars, uh, War Machine, anything? Yeah. So. I guess we, we breached with the news quick, so I, I do want to chat about this. So they released another Battle Force for Empire, for Star Wars Legion. Oh, yeah? So it's called Tempest Force, and the name of the game here is ATS, Triple ATSTs, or Scout Spam. So the big thing is it adds a new ATST character with a bunch of new command cards, as well as a bunch of new command cards for the Battle Force itself. And it mostly just buffs vehicles. But essentially, the Battle Force allows you to take like six special forces but they're all scout troopers full units so no snipers you can take some speeder bikes as well but the which is already crazy on its own but the craziest thing is you could take three atsts you could three take three heavies but you can only take uh, atsts and they get like scout or something so it's supposed to represent the empire at endor when they get murdered by ewoks mm. so yeah it's yeah triple atsts i don't think it's op or as strong as people think but it's definitely a unique kind of list, which I appreciate. I mean, just seeing three ATSCs on the board is super cool. That'd be nice to run. Yeah. I don't have I'm an ATSC, have... but, you know, I'd like to run one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and it comes with a special character who, again, buffs ATSCs and his command cards to let you win Uber more and stuff. But yeah, it's yeah, I really, I really like that inclusion. I don't think I'll be playing it because I don't think I'll be. <laughs> I have one ATST. I don't see myself getting two more. Major. But, and I'm already happy with my other lists, and I think I'm gonna start playing Blizzard Force now. Major no, Marquand. Uh, Quand. What's up? Is that how you say his name? Major, yeah, Major Marquand. Yeah, that guy. Arsenal two eleven hit points. What's the eight? What's the gear symbol? It's um, uh resiliency. So how much damage it takes until it breaks and gets debuffed. That's so gonna take. So. It's got to take 8 damage before it gets debuffed? Is that what you're telling you, tell me? That's right. So when it gets to 3 hit points, it's debuffed? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure I understand. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, Shot-wise, it doesn't... Not too much there. The MS-4 Twin Blast Cannon, though. It's, it's a lot of shots that would be taken out. Of course, it could be... Facing the enemy to shoot him with that gun. Right. I don't know, man. Maybe I'll run it just for the meme. The triple ATSTs. I'll have to find three triple... I'll have to find three ATSTs, but yes, you know what? Why not? That's the start. How many points is an ATSC? 190? Oh, then that, that's the it, character. It, 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 you, you could run a list. I made a list, which is three ATSTs, one... Because the Marquan counts as an HQ, so you could, you could just run them. So three AT, or two ATSTs, major Marquan, which is in an ATSD. I think four scout trooper units, and then one stormtrooper unit. Or you could alternatively just take three stormtroopers and then two scouts or whatever. You, I think you need a minimum of two scouts, but is yeah. That's 500 or 800? That's 800 points. I said you can only run this in 800. Oh, you could run 500. I think you could take two ATSDs instead of... Because normally I could just take one. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Alright, interesting. Uh, I'll run it. I'll let you know how it goes. Here you go. But that was, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, uh, I mean... Empire, that's the third Empire Battle Force, and clones, droids only have one. Rebels have two with Ewoks, but, you know, Ewoks is such a different army that you really need to spam stuff for you like spam ewoks you know well look here the good guys need all the help we can get okay that, that's, that's why true. we need it so we need they it do need all, all the help but um but yeah so that's the that's the new legion thing right now i ewoks are coming out i think next week so we're gonna see where how the game goes with the, with the ewoks it's gonna be super cool but yeah that's the Legion news. Perfect. Well, I think we can go ahead and go right into our hobby news, hobby rant section. Start with you, John. What have you been up to? I know you've been uh, out there in the tournament scene. 
Yeah, so before that, I, I did play a 30k game yesterday. Finally put my 3,000 points of fully painted word bears on the table, and it was great. I smashed some Blood Angels. I think my opponent, great game, he charged like 30, 20 Assault Marines, a Command Squad, 5 Terminators, and some Destroyers into my 10-man Galvorback Brick, and they came out on top, and I'm like, holy crap, possessed for the win. Um, so yeah, that was nuts. That was absolutely nuts. Super fun game. It's 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 so nice seeing my fully you know my full army on the table. So very happy about that. But full yeah, army speaking... fully painted. Oh yeah. Um, just in time too. Now that Epic and Ninth Edition is or are what's going on. So yeah. But um yeah, speaking of tournament scene that you alluded to, I played in a Legion tournament recently. And on Sunday, it was Geeky T's store championship. And I got third place. I actually was at the... It's weird how strength the schedule works. So this is the second time now where... Because I was at the top tables. So I was playing for first place. But the person who... So this is the same thing at the next-gen tournament, a few, like a month ago, a month-ish ago, where the person who lost to first place in the third round... So that person went if they go three and one, they get second place. And the person who lost to first place gets third. Cause just because of strength of schedule, which it's weird, but I'm fine with it, you know. Um it gives you a chance for to have better prizes if you know if you lose round three. Right. But yeah, I played four rounds. I played Empire. My list was long story short, was Agent Callus because of his points decrease. Imperial Officer, three or two units of Shore Troopers with the Heavy, two Mortars, two units of Stormtroopers with the Bazooka and the Specialist, which gives them a free aim if you recover it, and Boba Fett and IG-88, standard double bounty gun line, and it was great. Played against a variety of lists. I played against Droids. I played First game was Droid, second game was Rebels, third game was Empire, and fourth game was Clone. So I actually played against all four factions. But congrats to Kenji, who won first place. Great kid, really good player. Super close game, too. Like, that last game went down to... He had to essentially commit Anakin in, in front of my bounty hunters. Because all I had left were my bounty hunters, Callus, I think a mortar, and the officer. And Anakin had three wounds on him. So he had to, he had to commit to win, and I had one like I think a turn and a half to kill Anakin, and I just couldn't. So he he got the win. So congrats to, to Kenji for that. But it was a great game, great tournament. Um, yeah, I and he, he, the winner gets an invite to the World Championship at Adepticon. So, yeah, that was super fun. My brain's dead though. I had a headache when I woke up Monday morning because the tournament was on Sunday, four rounds, from like. I think 9.30 to... I think we finish our last game at like 8.30. <laughs> so, it was a while. I think that's 10 hours. Not... I mean, there was breaks in between, right? But it's a lot of gaming. Yeah, so, a lot yeah. Of game um, super happy with my performance with my list. Way better than the Double Dark Troopers. But I think I'll be moving to Blizzard Force now, going back to Darth Vader. So, yeah. Um, that, that was my my weekend, playing some Legion. How about you, Matt? Uh, well, uh, last time I played uh some forty k. That was that was my two weeks. Last week I did a or two weeks ago did a one v one. I got to use my two k Eldar for some uh, Tyranids, and uh, I must say, this is obviously uh, with the nerfs. That are not nerfs, uh, updates that had happened. So, you know, only one strand of fate dice per phase. All the artillery units went up in points, blah, blah, blah. And uh, since I don't run anything like that, no artillery, no towering, uh, my list was completely unaffected. <laughs> so, I had, a, I had a blast. I I ran all aspect warriors. The missions were going pretty good. Avatar. I love the new Avatar. He's a bit expensive for what he does, but goddamn does he does he do great. 
Uh, yeah, I uh, stomped some Tyranids last week, or two weeks ago, I should say. And it was a fun. I'm still trying to find out if this game is faster or not. Still, still in the baby phases, still trying to learn everything. Mm, okay. But it's it feels a little bit longer, but then again, you know, the people I play with right now, they're not hardcore. I get or they're 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 more casual. I guess would be the the better word to say. You know, they're not okay. out there trying to do tournament lists and all the time. You know, they're either new players or they just want to throw a list together and just run whatever they want to have on the board kind of deal i mean i i have travis comes but you know with his work schedule it's hard for him to stop by every now and then but i'm still still learning that uh last week though i did do some uh i did 40k again did some uh sisters of battle black templars versus some chaos space marines it was a 2000 point game versus uh you know two different armies with a thousand points each and I must say, uh, Chaos Space Marines, let the galaxy burn, or whatever they are, Dark Pack ability. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty pretty nasty. I'm not going to lie, it's pretty nasty. I mean, the drawback being, you know, you have to pass a Battle Shock test. To, or suffer mortal wounds, but it still goes off. Uh, just to get all the sustained hits, or whatever ability uh, coincides with their marking. Up. Uh, the sustain hits on like a heavy a de a havoc unit or a vehicle with a bunch of like glass cannons that's nasty that is gross just the amount of hits that you could oh, yeah. potentially get off that uh so i learned that the hard way uh we didn't get too far into that game but uh if the game had gone on a bit longer it was definitely going to be a chaos space ring victory there so doing the emperor a disservice on my part there but you know lesson learned lesson learned but the exciting thing that happened last week which is what i've been doing is my kickstarter finally came in Yay. after four years i just put this up wow. on the screen here four years well wow. the kickstarter finally came in there we go those are all the boxes there's a few more boxes underneath those boxes but that's there i've just been putting them together this right here is just the starter set for the vikings all the models in there some valkyries that have came new hero classes some other new models and of course Flying Frog has done another Kickstarter. And, uh, you know, I should learn my lesson. Shouldn't give him money. But I don't really care about the weight. <laughs> I don't really care. Because I have so many projects that this coming in late doesn't bother me. There you go. Because, uh, I mean, if you look at my room right now, I've got so many plastic sprues on the ground because I've been building everything in this box. But yeah, they're going to be announcing another one. I'm going to back it because I like the products. The model quality is a bit uh, lackluster, but, you know, I get around it. But they got a, a Egyptian theme and a, uh, what do you call this? A train map that they're going to be doing. So I look forward to seeing how that's going to be going. Uh, in case you don't know, for those unfamiliar with Shadows of Brimstone, it is a basically an alternate world where Cthulhu monsters are part of the world. So anything, any Eldritch horror that you can think of is most likely in this game. It is a dungeon crawler. You just progress by keep going to each room. Usually there's a booklet with a mission that you can uh, choose to do, and that's how you play the game, and it's a uh it's supposed to be a multi-session game where you level up your characters collect items blah 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 you know standard rpg kind of game so i'm looking forward to it 
And then, of course, their bonus will be this Crimson Hand Enclave. Basically, the Crimson Hand is from one of their other games. I don't remember what it's called. But mm -hmm. uh, you get to be... You get to play the bad guys, pretty much, in this expansion here. So, I am looking forward to this, even if it does take uh, three years to make. But, uh, again, I've got the Leviathan box, Space Rain side. Uh, I still need to work on. I've got some... I'm looking at the name. Warcry units I still need to work on. Mm-hmm. And then of course I got this big box that I uh that I just got last week that I'm working on now. So I'm excited. I'm excited to play it. More excited than 10th edition, if you can believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's what I'm working on. There we go. That's pretty much all I have. I don't you got anything else you want to add before we close out of here? I think that's pretty much it all right then well i'd like to thank everyone who made it to the end and uh we'll see you next time later everyone <laughs>